Uh, but before we do all of that, today the Prime Minister has announced that the government will be implementing a ban on disposable vapes as soon as possible. And they will also be placing restrictions on flavours. They're changing how they're displayed in shops, as well as giving stricter fines to those who sell vapes to under-18s. And this news is something that our first guest today has been hoping to hear for some time. Head teacher Tony McCabe has been leading the fight against vaping at his secondary school and even installed vaping detection alarms on the yes, premises. Absolutely that. And the vaping problem is so bad that the detection alarm actually went off more than 100 times on the very first day. Now, Tony joins us now alongside two of his students, Izzy and Layla. Good morning to all of you. Thanks for coming morning, in today. Yes. Now, this is something that, as a parent, I was really, really pleased to hear. Tony, when did you first notice that there was a serious problem with vaping? Yeah, well, we, um, we've got more toilet cubicles per pupil than we've ever had as a school before. And we noticed that the demand on our toilets was greater than ever before. So we started to look and think, why were young people wanting to use the toilet cubicles and why were the queues? And then we realised that many were going in there to vape. Um, as we researched into that a little bit, more, we realised that many young people were asking to come out of lessons to use the toilets. And that then triggered to us that potentially a young person can't last more mm. than an hour without the addictive That's need so to scary. use a vape. That's I mean, it's quite scary. We just said then that you put these alarms in. You said, I'm not having this. I'm going to put alarms mm. in the toilets. And they went off on the first day over 100 times. How on earth have you got the manpower, the teachers all around to police something yeah. like that? Yeah, well, uh, our take on it is that the young people themselves are, are victims of the society that they, they've grown up in and the availability of vapes. So we know that we've got to support the young people mm. so that when they are caught in a, in a toilet cubicle, there's, there's no siren that goes off that's picked up on CCTV as the, the child leaves the cubicle. Mm -hmm. And then what we can then do is do a piece of work with that young person to, to teach them about addictions. And um, we've been involved uh, with quite a few charities and organisations, uh, Wise Up being one of them, to, to look at um, how we transform that addictive behaviour mm. and allow them to, to give up. And when you first saw... I, mean, I read this morning that you were on a bus and you saw a young person vaping and initially you first thought, actually, it's better than seeing somebody smoking, which is actually what all of us thought. Well, we were sort thought, of yeah. led to believe that actually vaping is better than smoking. But you've actually seen some really serious incidents, haven't you, at school with unregulated vapes? Yeah. So initially, just seeing um, young people using a, a vape, you thought the, the uh, effect on the other people in the community is, is going to be less in terms of passive smoking. But um, very early on, just after we returned from, from COVID, after the lockdowns, we had a young person that um, shared a vape with somebody else outside of school, came onto the school site, and then within about 10 minutes, that young person um, had passed out. Um, we've had three instances of this over the last few years. All from vapes. All from vapes. Um, and it, it appears that some of those vapes have been uh, from the unregulated market, um, shared by somebody else. And my thinking is that um, if a retailer is prepared to sell it to, to somebody under the age of 18, you've also got to, got to question the credibility of that, that retailer mm -hmm. as, the product to, as, as well. to whether it's a, yeah. a genuine product. Yeah. Uh, and they can contain uh, substances such as THC mm -hmm. that can have a, a devastating impact upon the, the health of the young person. And in terms of health for young people, this there are so many moving parts here because obviously you can... As Rylan said before, you can police it to a degree. You've, you've fitted these alarms, you're trying to monitor the queues for the toilets, so on and so forth. But obviously there's parents that are going to have to try and yeah. police the same thing too at home. So is, there, is that kind of work that you're doing with families outside of school as well as in school? Yeah, absolutely. We've been really, really open and honest with our community and speaking to head teachers up and down the, uh, up and down the country, I don't think there's a single school that hasn't um, got young people that have got addiction mm. to, to vapes. So we share with families about um, the fact that a young person who's addicted, they're not going to give up overnight. They might need um, a, a therapy programme. Well, weaning off, and to be perfectly honest exactly, with you. Exactly, yeah. Mm, mm. yeah. And they need support to do that. So... Yeah, a young person um, using a vape repeatedly in the same place, then, then that, that might be sanction-based approach. The but government's obviously announced this support. crackdown now, and they're saying disposable vapes, end of the year, we're not doing it no more, done. It all sounds good on paper, but we know they've done this before with other things, and then that turns into a little bit of a black market. How are you going to challenge that when 
that yeah. law comes in in a school setting. We've, we've all been to school. Mm -hmm. We know dodgy dealings go on mm -hmm. behind the teachers' backs. How are you going to deal yeah. with that? Well, we already work with Greater Manchester Police and having our, our vapes that we've confiscated tested um, with uh, local testing labs. Um, we do know that uh, many counterfeit vapes have been count, uh, confiscated from mm. local retailers. Um, but ultimately, um, we, we don't believe that we can police it. All that we can do is try and educate young people and the adults yeah. in their lives. Um, yeah, it's brilliant disposable vapes potentially being banned, but that will then just turn the attention to potentially e-liquids mm -hmm. and, and what substances yeah. they could contain. And, and girls, how, how worrying is it for you? We should start by saying that neither of you vape. We, Good. We, we, we know that, we're happy about that. Is it, are you, is it something that you're concerned about? Because I suppose you must see it amongst your friends and your peers. Is there that element of peer pressure? Definitely, because it's become such a social thing now. You always get offered it, no matter who you are. It's always there. And I think that's where it's mainly come from, because you see one person and then it gradually starts becoming worse and mm. worse mm -hmm. from them. Mm -hmm. And Layla, what about you? Do you think when these alarms have gone in, you've, you've, you know that maybe some of your friends that do vape, they tend not to do that now at school, or are they just finding other places to do it? Well, um... Since the alarms have been put into the bathrooms, definitely there's been a decrease in people going in groups into the cubicles. But there definitely is a more increase in people doing vaping privately, for yeah. example, in, at home or at parks or in gatherings. So, but I, there definitely has been a decrease in them since the alarms have been installed, yeah. Well, do you know what? I think we're going to bring in Dr. Sarah, yeah, actually. Sarah, come on over. Lovely mm -hmm. to see you. Um, Dr. Sarah, the, the government have announced this. We know this is a, a good thing on, on the whole, yeah. but it is going to introduce a whole host of problems, sort of behind closed doors, dealings, mm -hmm. things like that. Do you think this is going to work out the way they intend it to? I certainly hope so. Um, I think we know that the uh, negatives associated with vaping are so significant in terms of the youthful population that um, I think something had to be done. Mm. We know that hospital admissions have been going up um, in terms of young people. The, the statistics actually were showing that there's been a sixfold um, number of hospital admissions in under 20s from, to, to 66 from 2021 to 2023. And the latest figures um, showed that since January 2022, there have been at least 24 NHS hospital admissions for children under the age of 10 under for, 10. for vaping. Um, so something has to be done. And I hear what you're saying about, you know, black markets and things like that. Um, we know in Australia, for example, they um, have made it a prescription only um, service. So you have to have a prescription from your doctor in order to get these vapes. Um, and they've had a flurry of um, black market yeah, I dealing. Imagine. Yeah, I can imagine. imagine. But I think it's important that we don't have them out and about next to the suites, or, you know, in a news agent. We don't have them right there with... But they fun. do look like that, don't they? It's the way it's all branded. It, they and, do and, look yeah, fun. Which is why I'm yeah. pleased at the point where you hear that they're going to be displayed differently. They, yeah. They're made to look like sweets. There's different colours. There's a, You know, they kind of, if you, you see that picture. It's very appealing, isn't it, to a younger eye? Um, Dr Sarah, I do wonder from... We spoke about this earlier, didn't we, that there's not that sort of information and there's, I suppose, not the research yet to mm. show what vaping does long term. And mm. I think that's something that when, you, when you're talking about 10, 11 year olds, that's really what worries me, that we don't actually know the effects it's going to have in the future. Mm. Yeah. I think there are three main issues with, with regards to vaping. Firstly, nicotine, it's not considered a particularly dangerous drug. It's fairly safe, but in children, um, it is highly addictive. And we know that it can affect brain development, cognition um, and concentration. We also know that vaping can have effects on um, the lungs. So it can cause inflammation, exacerbations of asthma, bronchitis, um, and then as, we, as you just said, the third point is the unknown, and that's the most worrying part. There's been no longevity, part. has there? There's been no yeah. longevity, and, for example, we used to tell pregnant women to drink a Guinness a day in order to get <laughs> their iron crazy. levels up, or we used to tell people to smoke in order to help calm their nerves, and that was all because, at that time, we didn't have that information, and I think it's so important that we don't make those mistakes again. The yeah. nicotine is something that I think is very interesting because, as you say, it's highly addictive. Anyone that smokes or vapes or... or choose gum, whatever it is, it, it is an addiction. Yeah. What would be your best advice to a young person that might be 
watching this, you should be in school, by the way, <laughs> um, that, that maybe thinks, look, I don't really like the vapes, but I feel like now I can't do without the vape. It's what a would, habit. Yeah. 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 What would be the best way for them to come off of that? With most addictions, it's usually about weaning yourself off them. Of course, one can go cold turkey, but that can be very difficult, especially if you don't have that drive to do it. Um, but slowly weaning yourself off is, is a, an important way to do it. And you can actually do that because you can get lower nicotine um, vapes and you can adjust the, the amount of nicotine you're taking in. Um, but if you have any concerns, the NHS Better Health website also has a wealth of information and it's got um, just Ask Frank, which is uh, another website that you can get some more information mm. on. Brilliant. Thanks, we're, we were talking about the alarms earlier, which is I think is just genius and the way that you can track that and the, and the, and the sort of the intricacy of, of it. Layla, what effect has the alarms had at school? Um, well, since they've been installed, um, there used to be many groups in one cubicle, a lot. And after they've been installed, there's now barely any groups going into the cubicles. It has been shown as a positive effect yeah. since they've been installed. That's a real positive effect. Yeah, it's a positive. Yeah. Yeah. Tony, I mean, let's look a year from now. Mm -hmm. These have been banned. What are you hoping to see in the school? Oh, we're hoping that our detectors don't detect any yes. um, vapes within our, our cubicles, but also um, helping our young people regulate their thought processes about what is potentially harmful and helping them to make wise choices in their life beyond school. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much well for coming done. in. Well Honestly, done. Well it's done so with brilliant. what you're doing. Girls, lovely to see yes. you. Sarah, we'll see you in a little bit. Yeah.